Good morning. It's Monday morning again, and we are in April. I am Melissa Ebkin, and I'm the pastor of the Nyanic and Iliopolis Christian Churches. I'm the founder of Light Life and Love Ministries and outreach to help those who build faith in life who don't have a church connection. And I'm also the host of the Pursuing Uncomfortable podcast. Welcome. I go live every Monday morning to give you some inspiration for your week, some tools and strategies perhaps for building up your faith and wellness. And this morning, I would like to share with you a few things I've been working on, but I'm going to do that by talking about fleas and acorns. Yeah, fleas and acorns. Sounds like a good plan. So the first thing I want to talk about are the fleas. This week, my focus is all about the thoughts that we have and how they change and form and affect our perceptions and our experiences. So fleas, there's an experiment, and it's kind of a popular experiment if you Google it or on YouTube or on Google, you'll find a video about it that a scientist did. They took fleas and put them in a jar and the fleas kept jumping out of the jar. So the scientists put a lid on the jar. You know, there were holes that none of, no fleas were harmed during this experiment. And after three days, the scientists came back and took the lid off. None of the fleas would jump out of the jar any longer. In that time, they had become become conditioned to that limit. So they didn't jump that high. They didn't jump high enough where they would hit the top and come back down. They changed their behavior. After leaving the lid off, nothing ever changed. The fleas no longer jumped higher than the jar. Interestingly, the next generation of fleas born of those, or hatched of those, I guess. They also did not jump higher than that conditioned, conditioned barrier. Now there's a lot that one can take away from that experiment. One is that once we become accustomed to a limit, it becomes a reality for us. Let that sink in a minute. Once we become accustomed to a limit, it becomes a reality for us. So much so that we pass it on to our offspring. So let's think about the implications for a little bit. If we have limits on how we think we can be in this world or who we can become or what we can accomplish, those limits are going to stay with us unless we actively change them. And not only will those limits stay with us, but they'll also get passed on to our next generation. And we can see patterns of this, generational patterns even, throughout society. And I'm not going to get into all of the examples of that right now. I think if you uh, thought about that for a little bit, you can see those examples and those patterns yourself. But I want to talk about the limiting thoughts you have on yourself. What do you think is possible for your life? You know, when we were kids, anything was possible. I remember as a kid dreaming about being an astronaut, dreaming about walking around in space or being president or being an incredible lawyer or doctor or anything I imagined. However, I did not know that building Legos was a profession that one could actually do. A little bit bitter that that wasn't represented on career day, but another story. Anyway, anything I could imagine possible, I at some point imagined everything possible when I was a kid. But as I grew up, those perceptions changed on what was possible. And we have voices in our head. Some are placed there by our parents or other adults and influences in our lives. And some we put there ourselves. 
But those voices put limits on who and what and how we understand ourselves to be in this world. Once we recognize they're there, we can change them. So now let's move from talking about fleas to talking about acorns. An acorn is what, about this big, give or take? An acorn's pretty tiny. That acorn, though, is going to grow up to tower over people and buildings, and it's gonna be huge. An acorn grows into an oak tree, and it provides shade for several stories up in a building. An oak tree is a towering, living thing. And not only does it provide shade for those under it, it provides homes for animals and ecosystems. If you went into an, to look at an oak tree in a forest or in a city or wherever, you would find many different species living there. You would find shade of an oak tree cast out quite a distance. There are so many things that oak tree does in its maturity that that acorn would never believe. So what can we take away from these two things, from looking at fleas and looking at acorns? Well, first, let's look at what limiting voices we have in our minds. What is our mind and consciousness telling us that we can't do or we can't become? Are we too old to learn something new? Are our bodies too old or too broken or too sore or too inflexible or too, I don't know what, to be able to move and play and do the things that we enjoy doing? What is it that you limit in yourself? Or if you have dreams and aspirations of a business or of some something, you can do it. Don't limit yourself. Why not you? Why not you? People achieve success all the time. You deserve that. You deserve to believe that you're capable of doing that. You put in the work just like other people put in the work and you should have the same results. It's the mind and the thoughts that we have going on in this space that make the difference in our outcomes. It's simple, but it's not easy. It's a simple thing to understand and grasp. It's a simple thing to know that that's what's holding us back, but it's not always easy to change that. I've put together a couple of tools that I want you to know about. They're yours for, the, for using however they can benefit you. And they're, the links to those are in the comments below. I've learned that if you put links in the big post that Facebook doesn't like to promote things that take you away from Facebook. So they're in the comments. There are two links. The first is to discover your, your spiritual personality type. We don't all communicate with the holy, our higher power, the source, light, God, however you like to, to name that entity. We don't all communicate the same way. We each have different personalities and different tendencies and different intentions in knowing how we uniquely receive and process information and spiritual information can go a long way to helping us, one, to improve our communication with Holy, but also to be comfortable in that, to find that place that maybe we haven't been able to connect with, with God or with Holy before. And not only can we improve how we connect, but then we can use the tools to build that relationship further. And so if you're an advocate, meditation is not a tool that's gonna to be really useful for you. If you're a sage, uh, you know there are a group of tools that will help you out a lot using the others might keep you held back. So discover your spiritual personality is a really useful tool that can help you uncover how you uniquely communicate with Holy and what tools 
that you can use to build your faith and to build that spiritual connection and what worship practices would speak to you powerfully. The second link is to, uh, it's a, a little collection of 25 emotional uh, wellness skills. And this report goes through some things that you may not realize that you've been experiencing but they can really affect the quality of your life and the, the truth that we know and understand about ourselves. So take a minute and get both of these resources for yourself. They will be helpful. And if there's something that you're looking for that's not there or not available, let me know. I want to provide resources and strategies and tips that you can use in your life. So, takeaway this week think good thoughts about yourself if the words I can't come up let that be a red flag to sit and wonder and be curious why can't I and maybe change those thoughts and if you want some help and support along the way reach out I would love to help you with that I'd love to support you in doing those things in your life so this week Let's be aware of the voices that tell us what we can and can't do inside our heads. And let's make sure that they are building us up. Let's make sure that those voices that we hear in our consciousness are ones that are healthy for us. They do, appreciate, they do change and shape our experiences. So I want you to have a blessed week. I know that this weather this time of year is a little bit erratic. It can be sunny and beautiful one day and calling for snow the next. And that can wreak havoc on our spiritual and emotional health. So be persevere. Be strong in tending to those aspects of your health to get us through to the sunny days. If you need some support in that, reach out to me as well. I hope you have a fantastic week, and I will talk to you again Monday. Bye for now.